JJ the CPA here, hope you're doing well. So this video is for my future compadres, my future fellow CPAs. I'm putting this video together not only for those candidates in India for the CPA exam, but also for the candidates here in my home country, the United States of America. So if you're watching this video, then you watch my other video because this video right here yet is not public other than in the body of the previous video. So I want to thank you for coming to this video. And the reason I want to thank you for that is that that means you're one step closer to becoming a CPA. That's one of the reasons that I only release this video in the body of that video is that you've now traveled down the rabbit hole and you're going to be able to go all the way to the end. And when you come out on the other side, you will have those three letters behind your name. What I want to talk to you about in this video is a little bit of my journey. But the first thing I want you to do right now, I want you to do this. Even if you have to pause this video, I want you to get a piece of paper and I want to get, I want you to get a pen and you might pause it because I want you to get the best pin you have on you or around you right now. Get the best pin you've got. And I want you to write your name down. You might even just sign your name. Sign your name right now. And if you're where you can't write your name down, then I want you to envision it right now. I want you to look at your name on that piece of paper right now. What's missing from it? C P A. So I want you to imagine now that you're a CPA and I don't want you just to add your name or I don't want you just to add the three letters to what you wrote down. Now I want you to write your name down. I want you to write your name down and then CPA right after it. Do it. Dare you. Write your name down and then write CPA behind it. What's the difference in those two names? You're the same person. But when somebody sees that name on a business card, in the signature area of your email, on your social media, behind your name, here's your name. CPA. I'm pretty proud of being a CPA. Obviously, JJ, the CPA. Being a CPA, for me, was an escape. It was the goal of a lifetime. It was to the promised land. It was to a better life. It was to the land of milk and honey where the streets are paved with gold and everybody knows you're a CPA. That's what I wanted. And guess what? Now it's taken a long time, a lot of hard work. And I'll share more with you in another video and later. But I have all those things. I have all those things. For those of you that want those things, better things, newer things, more job security, more respect, more opportunity, you will have that. For some, it could be more of an opportunity to have more time. I have a lot of time that I'm able to do things because of my success that has been heightened because I'm a CPA. 
When you become a CPA, it's an identity and everybody knows it worldwide. Everybody knows what a CPA is, or at least they have an idea of what a CPA is. The first thing that comes to mind is that that is somebody that can be trusted. That is somebody that is smart. That is somebody that is got their game on. And it's also somebody that is successful. It's somebody that has drive, somebody that knows what's going on. In many, many circumstances, they are seen as the smartest person in the room, whether they are or not. Being a CPA is a big responsibility. You're living up to a worldwide reputation, but guess what? All it requires is you to be you and to be a good person. That's easy. And then it requires determination to pass the exam and have the requirements to be able to sit for the exam and then to get your license and carry those three letters after your name. If anybody can do it, you can. You need somebody to believe in you? I do. It's easy. Because if you're watching this right now, you already believe you're going to become a CPA. So what was I escaping from? What was I escaping from? Now, many have had it worse than me. Many would have a story that could outdo my story. So I don't share my story with you to really impress you. I don't, I'm not going to share my story with you so that I'm competing with your story. But we all have a story. We all want it better. The escape for me was from the oppressive childhood that I had. I grew up in Seattle, Washington in the USA. I was born in California in the USA. And when I was growing up, I was a a missing child. My dad and my whole family didn't know where I was other than my mother and my grandfather. So how could I be a missing child? Well, my mom took me, hid me from all of my family. The only person that knew where I was of family was my grandfather, my mother's dad. And being a missing child had led to other things such as growing up in a set of circumstances that were not good, were abusive. And I could go on and on, but that's not really the point of the story other than I needed to escape my childhood. I needed to get out and break free from the oppression that I had to the level that I knew was going to ruin me if I didn't get out. Well, how was I going to get out of that? Well, it's simple. You can just move away. Simple. You can do something different. You don't have to become a CPA to escape from anything. But I wanted to escape and then provide a better life for my family, for my future family. The escape wasn't just getting out. That could be easy or hard depending on your circumstances. But my grandfather, the one person that I knew besides my mom growing up that was family, was a CPA. He was a certified public accountant. Now, of course, when I was in grade school, before I graduated and went to college, and I was young and 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. I didn't know what a CPA was. I knew he was a CPA. What I knew was the watch that he wore, the suits that he wore, the car that he drove, that he played golf and was a member at a country club and had a house on the beach in California on the Pacific Ocean and had a huge house on a lake with a boat, 
had his own office. And all the other things that go along with that lifestyle. And what I wanted was that. So even though he was successful, I saw him once a year for three days. I didn't grow up with anything handed to me. I had a paper route when I was nine years old. I worked multiple jobs when I was in seventh and eighth grade as well as in high school. Just like you probably did and many did and many have worked probably harder than that and for more dire reasons. But what I had learned growing up, though, was that if I wanted more, I had to work hard and extra. I had to work extra. And when I saw my grandfather's lifestyle, I knew that I wanted that lifestyle for me and my family when I would have one and my kids when I would have one. This is what I was thinking when I was young. So when I went off to college, I left high school a year early. That means that I went to high school for only three years, not four. So I started college one year early. Started college when I was 17 here in the States. You typically start college when you're 18, maybe 19. Went to college and knew that I wanted to go into business. I knew that I wanted my grandfather's lifestyle and I took an accounting class my sophomore year and called my grandfather and said, tell me more about being a CPA. And the first thing he told me is, let me tell you this, become a CPA. No matter what, become a CPA because they'll never be able to take those letters away from you. He said, I want you to write your name down. And then I want you to write your name down again. And I want you to put CPA behind it. And he said, you may not know what that means, but can you already tell there's a difference with your name, with credentials? And he proceeded to tell me, that the key was to get my accounting degree as soon as possible, get a job at a CPA firm, study like nobody's business to become a CPA, pass the CPA exam. He said, it doesn't matter how many times you take it, you will eventually pass. And then he said, four years out, if you want to do what I do, get your accounting degree, become a CPA, four years of experience, and then open your own CPA firm. And so I've had my own CPA firm right at about 24 years. I've been in the business for 28 years, and it has been phenomenal. So I've been a CPA my entire career, just the same as anybody who becomes a CPA. They will be a CPA their entire career doesn't matter if you actually go into accounting or work with numbers or tax or auditing for your entire career. No matter what I would have chosen to do, I would have still and would be still a CPA. It's an identity. And that identity is what I latched on to. That identity is what kept me motivated because I wanted to take on that identity as a certified public accountant because becoming a certified public accountant was in essence not being who I was. That lifestyle of oppression growing up, I would be able to leave it behind. I'd be able to shed it when I put on the identity of a CPA. Maybe that doesn't make any sense to you, but... For me, it made sense. For me, to become a CPA was to become something more, something better. So I was excited to take my classes, whether they were accounting or economics or business law or music or whatever it was, because I wanted to get my degree. The college I went to, it was five years to get an accounting degree. I got it done in four. 
So I started my career right after I turned age 21. So I just turned 21 and then graduated college. So here in the States, that's two years early. Why? Because I couldn't wait to become a CPA. I couldn't wait to start my career, my success. Now, one of the things that might be unique is that my sophomore year, at the age of 18, I knew that I wanted to become like my grandfather. I then knew I wanted to become a CPA, and then I knew that I then wanted to follow in my grandfather's footsteps to have my own CPA practice. And I have a CPA practice here in Oklahoma, in the U.S., and I do taxes and have lots of clients that I love and great friendships. But part of what it took as well when I got out of college, when I was working full time and working extra hours, I was working at a CPA firm in Dallas, Texas. And I was working at the biggest Texas CPA firm. So there were bigger firms out there, but this was a Texas-only CPA firm and of a Texas-owned CPA firm. It was the biggest one with 85 CPAs. And we were on the 20th floor on the Plaza of Americas in downtown Dallas, Texas. And every day I would ride and I would see the skyline of Dallas And I would be so excited. I'd get in to the office early to study in the tax library. Study for the CPA exam. At lunch, study for the CPA exam. In the evening, study for the CPA exam. I loved being at the office. So I got there and I immersed myself into becoming a CPA, learning from those that were there to teach me my seniors and fellow staff and managers and partners and had grown to have now lifelong friendships from the times of working hard. Now, the first time I took the exam was in May of 1993. And in May of 1993, there were five parts to the CPA exam, five parts. And we went and sat in a coliseum and there were hundreds of CPA candidates in one gigantic room taking the CPA exam all at the same time. In 1993, there was only two times to take the CPA exam. You could take it in May and you could take it in November. Two times, that was it. When you studied for the exam and then took the exam, you had to wait three months to figure out if you had passed or failed. So once you took the exam, you had to start studying for assuming that you may have not passed everything. So you had to start studying again. And when you found out, You then only had three months before you could take the next exam, and it was only twice a year. And in 1993, you had to sit for all five parts at the same time, as in it was a three-day ordeal. Three days that I had to take the exam back-to-back, all five parts. Now, that was the last time they had the CPA exam in five parts. After that, it was four parts. Now, I'll tell you this. When I took it in May of 1993, I had just graduated. And my grandfather said, just go sit for it. You won't be ready for it. You may fail all of them. But go sit for it so that you know what the experience is. So I went in there, had very little time to study. And what do you think happened? You're right. I failed all five parts. Now, here's the thing I'm going to tell you. No one, no one has ever asked me, once I became a CPA, 
How many times did you sit for each part? How many times did you fail a part? How many times did it take you to pass the CPA exam? No one asks you that. Everybody's asking you that while they're taking the exam. You're interested in it. You're interested in others that are taking it. But once you get those three letters, no one's going to ask you. So my grandfather told me, and it's true. So then I went and took it in November of 1993, four parts. You had to sit for all four parts. It's in the same big Coliseum, one room. It was in Fort Worth, Texas, where we sat for the exam. So you go in, and it was morning and afternoon, and then the next day, morning and afternoon. And one of the things was that when you took the exam, you had to take all four parts, assuming you hadn't passed them. But guess what else? You had to pass at least two and get above a 50% on the parts that you didn't pass for any of it to count. So guess what happened? I passed two parts. I took it in November of 1993. I didn't get the results until about February of 1994, and I had passed two parts. That studying early and during lunch and in the evening and on the weekends and the Saturday and the Sunday and some of the things that I missed, a lot of things that I missed, I had passed two parts. But guess what else? On one of the parts, I got a 48 so none of it counted. The two parts that I had passed didn't count. So when I went to take the CPA exam in May of 1994, this would have been the third time I was going to sit for it. Now, the first time I knew I wasn't going to pass anything. I wanted to just see what it was like, experience it. The second time was heart-wrenching. It was defeating. It was unbelievable. What? I had passed two parts, but they didn't count because I only got a 48 on one of the parts. The other part I got somewhere in the high 60s. So going into May of 1994, I had to sit for all four parts again. So all four parts because nothing counted. But then guess what happened? I passed two and I got above a 50% on the other two. Whew. Yes, passed two. And by getting above a 50 on the other two parts, they counted. And then in November of 1994, I passed the other two parts and found out in February of 1995 that I had passed then all four parts of the CPA exam. Now, in the state of Texas, I had to work for two years with a CPA, which is the equivalent of 4,160 hours. It'd be 52 weeks times 40 hours times two years. And I knew to the minute when I was achieving the 4,160 hours. I sat with the partner of the CPA firm on the 20th floor of the Plaza of Americas with my manager and the name partner. And we waited until the moment struck when I had achieved my experience. And so with having passed all four parts and having the experience, I was then a qualified CPA. I wasn't licensed yet, but I was a qualified CPA. And right there, Jimmy Curtis Averett, CPA, partner, name partner of Blue Averett, I was sworn in as a CPA. Wasn't licensed, but I was still sworn in as a CPA, meeting all of 
the qualifications. Now, what's important for you to know and remember and be clear on is that I could not present myself as a CPA until I was licensed. So from that, I then applied for my license in the state of Texas. And after getting it submitted and approved, I was then issued my CPA license and in 1996, I became a licensed CPA. And in 1996, in January of 1996, I could then write my name and put CPA after it. In 1990 is when I talked to my grandfather when I was a sophomore in college, inquiring of what a CPA is, what he does, how I could go about it. Six years. Six years for that journey to finish up college, get my accounting degree, get the CPA exam passed, get the experience, and then get the license. Six years. And having sat for the exam four times. Now, you... Today, you still have four parts, but you don't have to take it all at the same time. A lot of advantage for you there. Imagining having to take all four parts, two today and then two tomorrow. And if you didn't get above a 50 on two, none of it counted. Now, I believe the exam is more stringent in a different way. We actually still wrote down our answers and filled in circles. We weren't doing computers. We were not doing computers back when I was taking the CPA exam. We were writing it down. It's part of why it took so long to grade them. But my dreams were then coming true. I knew I needed more experience now that I was a licensed CPA. I got that experience. And then in 1997, I opened my own CPA practice. So I had 1993, 94, 95, and 96, four years of experience working in the CPA world. Became a CPA, licensed, and then in May, opened my own CPA practice. My dreams were now being realized. I now have two children. My oldest daughter has graduated from college. I've been able to pay for that. She was able to go to New York City and go to a dance college and then come back and get a dance management degree or a, a, a fine arts bachelor's of fine arts and dance here in Oklahoma paid for she has no student debt I had student debt she had no student debt been able to provide the way that I wanted my son is a senior in high school he's a pitcher he's six foot five he's a lefty pitcher he's getting ready to go pitch for Division I NCAA college here in the U.S. And the rest will sound like it's bragging. And so I'll put that all together in one video for you. And I will brag on the success that I've had in part, in big part, of being a CPA. I don't really even call it bragging. It's more just sharing. So if you've made it to here, you want to be a CPA. You're thinking about CPA. Write your name down. Yeah. Did you put your letters behind it? Yeah. You're on your way. That'll become a reality. You'll get the requirements taken care of. You'll pass the exam. It just takes determination. You will get it done. It doesn't matter if you fail. You get to take it again. It doesn't matter if you fail that. You get to take it again. You just get to keep taking it and taking it and taking it until you pass. And you will. Time and effort. 
determination, discipline, focus, you'll do it. You'll do it. I have no doubt in my mind because it is an open opportunity for you. There are not many opportunities out there that you have it all in your hands to seize that opportunity. It just requires time. It doesn't require, it doesn't require influence. It doesn't really require money. You may want to pay for a CPA exam course and pay for someone to show you how to study better. But you don't have to do that. I got one book per part at a local bookstore. That was it. And studied over and over and took note cards. And I'm a terrible test taker. I needed the help, but I couldn't afford it. Couldn't, couldn't afford it. I couldn't pay for it. I took on the identity of a CPA JJ the CPA. The opportunities there, all it requires is for you to pick up a pen, write your name, CPA, and then you become that. Do it over and over and over and over and over again. Anytime you're discouraged, Write your name down and write CPA after it. It's the only motivation that you need. Now, for those of you that are not convinced that you need to become a CPA, then you probably won't be. For those of you that are still considering it, you probably won't be a CPA. And I say that as a challenge. Because what it's going to require is for you to not look left, to not look right, to only keep your eye on the prize, the goal of becoming a CPA. Self-doubt won't get you there. Second guessing won't get you there. Whining, complaining won't get you there. Someone talking you into becoming a CPA, don't become one. You either are or you are, are you either are or you are either not going to be a CPA. No one's going to talk you into it. Yes, you'll probably make more money. Yes, you'll probably have more opportunity. Yes, things will be potentially easier, more doors will be open for you. But for the rest of your life, you will take on an identity, part of a group worldwide known, and forever you will be a CPA. If that's not something that you want, then don't even start. Don't waste your time. I say that as a challenge. I don't say that to discourage you. I say that as a challenge and more to say, look how easy it is to not become a CPA. It's just that easy to become a CPA. Choose it and then go get it. You can and you will. All right. Hey, thanks for listening. If you made it to here, I appreciate you need you to do me a favor, subscribe. Click it and be a subscriber. I want you to check out my other videos because you're going to see what a CPA can do to help people. You're going to see the amount of knowledge that you can gain as a CPA to help people. Now, being a CPA requires hard work, integrity, trustworthiness. It requires that you take that identity on and then you adhere to being what a CPA stands for, which is next level. 
I wouldn't say it makes you smarter. It wouldn't make you a better person. There are plenty of people out there that without these credentials can be way more successful than me and way more successful than you. And they did it without these credentials. There are other credentials that you can earn that are as valuable if you're going into a profession that requires those credentials. But here is the difference with the CPA. The CPA trumps all other credentials in the business world. And how do I know that? Because I'm a CPA. And in any room that I sit in, no matter their credentials, no matter the experience, no matter the age of who's in that room with me, me and my fellow CPAs are seen as the smartest people in the room, whether it's true or not. Perception is reality. The reality is I'm a CPA. The perception is you guessed it. Go get it. Go get it. We need you. We need more CPAs and we need you. All right. In the body of this video is links to other videos that are not public. They're just for you. You can catch me on other social media. You need a little motivation, check out my song on iTunes. You can get it free on Apple Music. JJ the CPA here, Money Never Sleeps. Listen to that song. It'll pump you up. Guarantee. All right. More videos to come. I've got a link to a playlist that I've been putting together the last couple of years talking about being a CPA. I'll have other videos that will come out. And guess what else? I'm not looking to get anything from you. I just want you to join me. I just want you to join this profession. I'm not looking for you to hire me as your coach. I'm not looking for you to hire me on how to study or tips. You don't need to hire me. I'm already here for you. JJ, the CPA is already a friend of yours and I'm just waiting for you to come and hand me your card with your name on it, with CPA after it, or better yet, hand me that piece of paper that you wrote your name down on tonight, today, this morning, and then wrote CPA after it. It's a reality. Now make it come true. All right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. Have a great one.